Good morning. It's May 25th. It's Memorial Day. And uh, it's good to be with you today. Thank you for stopping in. Uh, the passage I'm going to be reading you in just a few moments is from 1 Corinthians. And it is all about the Holy Spirit, which is very, very appropriate considering Pentecost is this coming Sunday. And Pentecost is all about uh, the Holy Spirit. It's the day that the Spirit uh, comes as promised by Jesus to the disciples who are all together in one place and uh, the day that the Holy Spirit is in the world and given to us as well. So to every follower of Christ ever since that time the Holy Spirit has been uh, with us active and at work. So that story of Pentecost can be found in the book of Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 21. I encourage you to read that chapter. I'm not sure if we're hearing it on Sunday or not, but it's just uh, one of the most remarkable pieces of scripture. So I encourage you to read that uh, this week if you can. Uh, but I'm going to be reading uh, another text that is appointed for this coming Pentecost Sunday from Paul's uh, first letter to the Corinthians. And uh, it's a letter that he wrote uh, responding uh, to actually the, the uh, reports that he was getting of there being quarrels and divisions in the, the people of his church that he had founded there. So um, you will hear Paul mention quite a lot actually the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the, um, the problem that, I, that he's addressing here is, the, is that the Corinthians had believed that one gift in particular that the Holy Spirit gives is the best of all the gifts, right? It's the primo gift that you can get from the Holy Spirit. That's what they believed. And that gift was that of speaking in tongues, speaking in a language that we can't really, that we can't understand. It's different than what happens on Pentecost when they speak in languages that people can understand. So, uh, but the this, this sentiment that the speaking in tongues was like A1, top of the list, that was causing uh, dissent and division because as you can imagine, it created a sense of competition uh, from the other people who did not have that gift of speaking in tongues. I don't have that gift. I've never spoken in tongues and I have heard people do so, but that is not my gift. So Paul, the Apostle Paul, dis just dislikes intensely any divisions that are among Christ's people. And so he writes to tell them that there is no one gift of the Spirit that is more important than the other, that gifts of all kinds are given to individuals for the common good. So it's the Spirit who chooses what that gift will be and who gets what gifts. It is not a competition. So let me read this passage to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 3b through 13. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. You can't get any more unified than that. So it's the unity 
of the people of God that Paul is teaching his church about. That the work of the Spirit is to unify God's people, to bring about the unity of those who follow Jesus. And even though we are not yet worshiping in church together, we can trust that the Holy Spirit is still at work within and among us, continuing to unite us together as people of God. Distance from one another cannot change any of that. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Gracious God, we are thankful that you have given us the Holy Spirit to be our comforter, our advocate, our helper, our encourager. Be with all who are struggling and suffering right now, especially those who are unemployed or underemployed, the homeless and those without hope. Strengthen and sustain all who work in care facilities, hospitals, and hospice settings, and be with all who are mourning the deaths of those they love. Calm the hearts of those who are worried or anxious. Cast your light into the darkness of those who are overwhelmed or depressed. Help us to use the gifts of your Holy Spirit and guide us in this time when we have trouble seeing the road ahead. We give thanks for the gifts you have given us, God. In your name we pray. Amen. Dear people of God, the Holy Spirit is at work with you right now. In the Spirit, we are one. So ask the Spirit today to see how the Spirit is working in your life, to show you something that you need to see, to open your eyes, and to remember that we are one. We are unified in Christ. Now go on this day and be blessed. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.